Welcome to On Microsoft. Conversations with thought leaders in Microsoft technologies. Brought to you by That, that's an interesting question because, you know, from, from the little bit that I've looked at PowerShell, uh, there also seems to be some syntactic constructs there that are, you know, very Perl-esque. How much, how, much, how much research did Microsoft... Oh, a ton. How much did they leverage a ton. from other programming languages? A ton. Well, you know, the goal was to, to give the Unix guys something that they could look at and say, yeah, okay, Microsoft is serious about a shell. Mm -hmm. And Unix has been with us for, you know, low these 30 odd years. So right. why not take the best of the best Unix shells and the best of, of the best of everything? Um, there are definitely some Perl-like constructs there. I think when you look at PowerShell and you, you lay out the whole language, it looks most like PHP. That's the thing okay. it, it reminds me the most strongly of. Um, it borrows stuff from, from VBScript. It borrows stuff from JScript. Mm -hmm. uh, there's even a couple little things that are very Kickstart sort of flavored. <laughs> uh, and, and you know why not? Why not take sure. the best of everything that's worked? And sure. I, I think what we've got in it is probably the best shell of any operating system now. Um, we won't we won't really see that. People won't really believe that for five or six years. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's there. The foundations are there. Why do you say that? I mean, if, if assume I, assume I'm a Unix guy, right? Sure. I'm, I'm bearded, grizzled, and I've got yeah. suspenders on, and I say, Bash is better than anything oh, Microsoft yeah. could ever ship. Yeah. Convince me. Well. There, there's two there's two parts of that. So you remember uh, when IIS 4.0 came out? It was the first Microsoft product to be built in the Microsoft Management Console. Right. And we all looked and we said, well, we've been hearing about this MMC thing for ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And, and what, this is it, IIS? you got to be kidding me. Because we were still on NT4 at the time. Right. Well, it wasn't until a few years later that Windows 2000 shipped and all of a sudden everything was in the MMC that we realized, oh, this is why this was important. Mm -hmm. PowerShell is the same way. What we've got now is the foundation of the house. And until all the products are built on PowerShell in the way that Exchange is, we're not going to see the full advantage. But once that happens, we're not dealing with a text-based shell. We're not dealing with a text-based operating system. These are rich, functional objects. You can do more in less words than you could with any Unix shell. Um, so when you say it's not text-based, what do you mean? When you type, I mean, obviously, I'm still typing at the keyboard. I have a console, Yeah, right? yeah. And when you type get process, you get a list of running processes. But right. that's not actually a list. PowerShell went and got process objects, and then since you hadn't told it anything else to do, it made that text list. But you can pipe those objects to other commandlets, filter mm -hmm. them down, sort them, select the top 10, and then stop those or report on those. Unix guys are always working with text. Right. Get a list of text, grep it for this, awk it for that, and you've got to run it through all these different utilities, and really you're just parsing text strings, which mm -hmm. is why a lot of Unix shells look a lot like Perl, because Perl's an awesome text parsing language. Right, right. Anytime you start thinking of how do I grep it and you're in PowerShell, stop right there and work with the objects instead because they've got properties. Right. Uh, get process, sort by handles and descending order, show me the top 10, convert those to HTML, out to a file, and it's not until the very, very end that you've got the text, but at that point, it's exactly the text you want. So this is basically a pipeline of objects rather than a pipeline of text. That's exactly what it is. Interesting. And Interesting. It's, it's, you definitely have to sort of find this dial in your brain to flip over to that. But once you do, you start mm -hmm. really, really realizing how powerful it is. Interesting. Um, I guess, assume, assume for a moment that I'm a, a system administrator or I'm a developer and I'm coming to you and saying, okay, I've heard about this thing PowerShell and I want to get started. What are some resources? Point me to some places where I can get started with this. I mean, beyond your book. Yeah, well, your book I, is obviously a good thing. I have a book, Windows PowerShell TFM. Um, that's a good place to start. Um, it, there's more and more coming up online. I mean, I, you know, the, the the upside of being at the forefront of a new technology is you're at the front. You know, you right. get to learn it while it's new before it's really mission. There's critical. a reason they call it the bleeding, the bleeding edge. edge. Um, the downside, though, is is you know, this is where the blood comes from. Is you're sort of out there a little bit by yourself. Um, right. I run a website, scriptinganswers.com, where we have a forums that you can jump into and ask questions. Um, the the blogs.msdn.com slash PowerShell uh, is Jeffrey Snover's. Well, it's the PowerShell team blog, but Jeffrey Snover, the architect, is in there an awful lot. Okay. That's a good place to look for stuff. The scripting guys on TechNet do a lot with PowerShell. Um, okay. I do a monthly te uh, TechNet webcast, which is free, on PowerShell. 
So there, there are resources starting to spring up. Uh, there mm -hmm. are folks who are starting to put up wikis of, of samples and things like that. Okay. It, when, when you look at where VBScript started and where it is now and think that it took it 10 years to get there almost, <laughs> um, you can kind of see that PowerShell's got a life. It's, it's coming quick. I think it's coming right. quicker than VBScript right. did. But you know, it's, it's going to take a while. I think a lot of administrators really don't understand um, why should I be doing this instead of just going out and getting 50 little GUI tools that each do one right. little thing? Right. Um, you know, there's a, a blog entry on forcesops.com where the, the fella basically said that. I don't see the point. Uh, you know, I have all my little GUI tools that do everything I need. I'm just going to stick with those. Why do I need this, this shell thing at all? Right. So that's still right. something that, that people have to learn and become comfortable with. Well, and, and I know, um, you know, certainly from a developer perspective, which is where I come from, you know, there's a rising interest in terms of being able to automate things, which typically means you want to be able oh, yeah. to script them, and, yeah. and you know, that's that's a lesson that I think developers are slowly beginning to learn. You know, in terms of doing continuous builds, continuous integration, yeah, you know, unit and, tests, all that kinds of stuff. And from another side too, when developers build products, we we administrators would love it if they build some automation into those products. Sure, um, absolutely. PowerShell makes that fairly easy for developers to do. Mm -hmm. um, Calm, you know, I never thought Calm was that difficult. But it, it's never been sort of a priority for people, and that's where the Unix guys have really kicked our butts, is, mm. is they can sit down and automate nearly anything because of the way their OS is built. Right. We tend to build the GUI first, and half our business logic sits in the GUI, and then if we've got some time, we'll build a COM component or a commandlet to go alongside it. Right. And, and that's, that's got to stop. The way the Exchange right. team went about Exchange is the way we have to. We have to think about automation and scripting as the first means of access and then layer a GUI on top of that for everybody else. Well, maybe not the first means, but oh, it's got to figure in there somewhere. Always the first. <laughs> you're scripting now. <laughs> you're, you're biased. Um, last question. If, if, uh, if somebody comes up to you and says, you know, what's the one thing I, I, you know, you can tell me about PowerShell that will just change my life forever. What's, what's your favorite feature about PowerShell that you think most people are going to get a lot of mileage out of? Oh, wow. Well, um, Probably WMI. Uh, right now in the Windows world, WMI is our, our best bet for doing any kind of remote administration. Mm -hmm. And WMI was pretty easy to use in VBScript, but it's just it's it's almost immoral how easy it is to use in PowerShell. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you fire off one command and you've got all this management information, and then oh. you can run and start sorting it. So uh, you know, for, for anybody somebody, for somebody who's never used WMI, give me an example of of you know what's what's possible here, what's capable here. Oh, you you can get uh, remote administration information. Um, mm -hmm. If you if you you know if you're familiar with Systems Management Server, nearly every bit of information it collects it gets through WMI. So all that information is at your fingertips. You can uh, change the password a service uses to log on, which most administrators never even bother to change those passwords because right. there's no way to there's no GUI to do that. Okay. Um, you can shut down remote machines. You can restart remote machines. You can stop and start services. You can you know you can reach out and do stuff from your desktop. Uh, Windows Server 2008 Server Core mm -hmm. doesn't run PowerShell because it doesn't run the .NET framework, but it runs Windows Management Instrumentation. So you can okay. sit on your, your desktop, do all kinds of stuff to a server core machine without ever having to fire up a remote desktop console, which won't get you much on server core anyway, right. or, uh, or walk into the data center. You know, that's, right. that's definitely not wow. the good thing to do. Cool. Well, Don, uh, I want to thank you for your time. and uh, Pleasure. I hope you enjoy the rest of TechEd. Thanks. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.